That explains it. Okay, so we need a Mark IV lift. There we go. I mean, if I set up a factory and it worked perfectly right from the get-go with zero issues, I'd be suspicious. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, we are going to get our iron and steel ingot production set up uh, as the next step in this multi-step build here. And I have the blueprints uh, already built, so I think the building of the machines and even the logistics under the machines is going to be fairly quick, but then uh, neatly running all of the conveyor belts over here is going to be actually probably the most work so let's go ahead and jump right in and get started with this so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to here uh, because this corner right here is where we're gonna start the next set of blueprints and we're gonna go into blueprints we're gonna go into smelters and we're going to oh you know what I need to move all of this stuff into the right place because um, I built them all on my test save Right, so here, let's go to edit. And the first thing I want to do is actually want to move this up a little bit because we're going to be using that. And then if we go to smelters, I want to add a new subcategory and we'll call this steel factory. Okay, and apply those changes. Now what we want to do is go up to undefined and grab all of these and drag them down into logis uh, no, smelters and steel factory. And that looks good. Okay, we'll apply those changes. And same thing for logistics. Let's go edit, add a subcategory, steel factory. Apply those changes. Go edit. Select all of these with a shift click. Down to logistics and into the steel factory. Okay. We got that set. Now let's go to smelters. And we want to start with actually foundries steel A. So we'll grab that. Make sure the arrow's uh, facing to the left, which it is. And... We want one full foundation this way. And again, this needs to line up on this corner, which it is. And let's pop it in place. Now let's come over here. And we're going to hold down E and we're going to grab Steel Foundries B. Um, go into blueprint mode and then snap that uh, to there. If I can get it to... Behave. There we go. That's looking good so far. All right. Why don't we, while we're here, let's connect the power up between them. So that's done. And we also need to connect this belt into there to lock that in. And I think that's all we have to do. Well, except for we got to do some stuff back here. I have myself a little note here to make sure and connect the next part to this part with a Mark IV belt. That's very important. But otherwise, I think that gets all this stuff connected up. Uh, why don't we, just for a little bit of redundancy, also connect there. Okay, looks good. Now, let's come back over here. And 
And we'll go into blueprints and we're going to grab the Foundry's um, Iron Alloy Recipe A. And then again, okay, it's, uh, oh, okay. Let's lock that. And then nudge it this way. So those butt up against there. And I believe that's correct. Let's build it. Okay, looking good. Why don't we connect the power from that one to this one to link those in. Then we'll come over here. And we will get Foundry's Iron Alloy Recipe B. Oh, I'm missing modular frames. I need 40 of those. Okay. Um, I guess I'll run back and grab them because... Um, well... The question, I guess the question is, will the depot fill back up before I get, you know, all the way back there and then all the way back here? Uh, let's take a look at that again. Yeah, it, it's going to need 40. So, I mean, it's kind of six and one half dozen the other. I don't believe I'm going to need modular frames for anything else today. Uh, I guess the other thing we could look at is, can we just make a couple? Yeah, why don't we do that? We'll just make a few. That'll save, save a little bit of time rather than running all the way back, you know, to the pyramid factory and then all the way back here. Let's try this again. We'll go to blueprints, iron alloy recipe B. And that's not correct. Try that again. That's probably correct. Let's double check before we commit. Not quite. It needs to be nudged to there. And that should be correct. Okay, let's build it. Now we're going to get our little Mark IV connection here. And then we don't need this sign here. We need to run a Mark III belt from here to here to get that connected. And of course, I'll go through and explain everything that's going on here. Let's run these lines to here. connected these lines here and those are already wired up on that end it's a beautiful thing okay I think that takes care of getting all of our machines in place um so, here's what's happening. All the way in the back here, we have a smelter making 15 Katerium ingots per minute, which is default. And we have a constructor making 120 Katerium wire, uh, which is the default. And that is going to then later be fed into our stator machines. And that's it for that. Easy peasy. We'll just feed Katerium into there. Along here, we've got um, all of these machines here are producing iron ingots using the iron alloy ingot recipe, which takes in iron and copper. By default, without any clocking, it makes 75 iron ingots per minute. Okay. So the first three are all making 75, and then this 
yellow one, which is underclocked, is making 45. All right, so if we go 75, uh, let's see, 75 times 3, which is 225, I believe, plus, uh, what did I say, 45? Is 270. Okay, and that's because, let's flip over to here. There we go. The iron plate constructors that we'll set up next, in the next episode, um, requires 270 iron per minute. Okay, so that's that's what those machines are feeding, is the iron plate constructors. All right. Okay, so let's shut that off. And then, um, so all of these, these four are, are connected together with a manifold, and then this is its output, uh, and that'll go to wherever it ultimately goes, which I don't really know at this point, so I just kind of have a lift sitting there to indicate that's an output. The rest of these foundries, starting from here, so this guy... Uh, these four and those two are all producing, uh, they're all underclocked and they're all producing 73.73 iron ingots per minute. So if we go 73.73 um, 73 times 6, that gives us 442.38 iron ingots. If we go back to here and we look at the uh, iron ingot consumption that we're going to need for our steel foundries, we can see that that amount is 442.419. Okay, so uh, this, is, this is a little lower because um, it's not, you know, I don't have that uh, ten thousandths of a place there. But it's close enough to where I'm not really too worried about it because here's the thing. If we, uh, let me think about this. It, 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 okay, so if we go 442, here, let me remove this again, 442, 419, 442, uh, 419, and we divide that by 6, that's 737365. But the machine just rounds off to 7373. It's because if I put the 65 in, uh, actually it's going to bump it up to, to 4, which is going to overproduce a, you know just you know in the hundredths, which again is not really that big of a deal. If we look at that math, so if we just did 73.74 times 6, now we're at 442.44 instead of 442.41. So, again, we're, we're almost splitting hairs here at this point, I, but I think I would rather have these be just slightly underproducing than overproducing, so they're not getting, you know, getting backed up. Not that that would happen very often. I don't even know how the math on that would work, but it would be very infrequent. But, you know, it would theoretically and mathematically happen at some point. So I'd rather have them underproducing just a little bit, which, of course, again, means then that the end machines theoretically and mathematically would probably stall out, get starved on a very rare occasion. But, you know, I can't do anything about it. <laughs> it, it only does 73.73 or 4. You know, it, it doesn't uh, doesn't round up. Okay, so anyway, we got that taken care of. And may, I don't know, maybe it does include those numbers and it just doesn't display them. I'm not really sure. Um, but that then gives us um, all of the iron alloy that we need to feed into uh, 12 foundries that are all making steel ingots using the solid steel ingot alternate recipe. So each one of these machines is taking in 
Okay, and so if we go um, 36.868 times 12, it comes out to 442, 416, which is three ten thousandths off from, <laughs> uh, you know, from what it says here. Right, so close enough. Close enough. And that's how that works out. Now, we also need that same exact amount in coal, uh, 36.868. Uh, so that also comes to 442, 416, and I have tuned the miners to be sending that amount uh, directly, right? Um, and, and that coal just goes right into these 12 machines, as, as we'll see here in just a bit. So I think that explains what's going on in terms of the math and the inputs on our machines. And hopefully that's as clear as mud for you guys. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to work on logistics. And I have, I did take the time to set up some blueprints to help with this. It's debatable whether or not it's worth it to build them out in blueprints as opposed to just building them out because one way or the other you got to build them out. But then you can kind of say that same thing for the machines too. But the advantage of doing it with blueprints is I don't have to reset all of the lifts. I uh, only have to reset a couple lifts, and then most of the lifts I can just set one time. So that's really where the big advantage comes in. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut away the floor here. And we're going to go into vertical mode and into one meter mode. And we're going to drop this down four like we did before. So, uh, oh, sorry, it's supposed to be in vertical mode. So one, two, three, four. And that gives us our lower platform to, to work on. Get that back into zoopity doop. Okay, and then I'm actually just going to go into blueprint mode and to foundations. And let's find the four by four by one. Move that over to to there and we're just going to put in a bunch of big floors for the moment so we have them in place and we don't have to keep adding more later and then I'll remove all of this later and it'll be easy to remove because it's in blueprint mode or most of it anyway okay let's start with that let's do another row down this way as well Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to grab, uh, oh, instantly, I'm feeding the iron ingots into the steel machines on top, um, because otherwise then we have too much of a mess down below, and I want the logistics on the underneath side here to be really clean, because those are going to be visible, because this is our, you know, going to be ultimately our truck bay coming in, so I want all this stuff, you know, coming down from the ceiling to look really nice and neat. And I, I want to keep it only one, you know, one uh, block or whatever down. I don't want to go down even lower than that because then we'll have ceiling clearance problems later on. Okay, so we're going to feed the coal in from underneath. And we're going to put this lift here pointing that direction. And that's going to be our guide for the blueprints pieces. Okay, so let's go to here. We'll go to blueprints. We'll go to logistics. And we want our coal input left piece. Left, you know, it, as we're facing that direction. Okay. And then what we want to do is we want to get that. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, get out of blueprint mode. We want that to go there and there. It's like we need to go over one more so that that's lined up right on that lift. And if I did everything else right, that means all the other lifts are lined up. And here again, I only have I only have to reset the guide lift and all the rest of them I can just do one time. Save myself a hell of a lot of time. But let's double check this on this side too and make sure that I did in fact set that correctly. So 
Um, what we're gonna do is grab a lift, and let's, um, oh, I guess I'm still in fly mode from my testing. Uh, advanced game settings, turn that off. Okay. Let's bring this down, and if I did this right, that should connect right in there. Damn, I'm good. <laughs> okay, that looks good. So, there's a high probability that all the rest of them will be fine, too. Um, so, I think what we'll do then is let's cut out all the way down here temporarily, and I'll add all that back in so we can get to our lifts. Oh, we got to put the second one in, too. So, let's connect there and bring that to there. And then we're going to go to blueprints, and we're going to go coal input right this time. Put that right about there. Move it back this way one. Okay, that looks correct. So this, um, yeah, this needs to be hooked up here. And these two lifts we do need to reset, as well as that one. Uh, no, actually we didn't need to reset that one. Because we did that after the fact. Okay, we hear the tink. As long as we hear the tink, we know we're good. Whoops. Tink. Tink. You get the idea. I love it. Love it. Not having to reset those lifts multiple times. Okay, uh, let's now do the same thing. Here, we won't worry about that right now. We'll, we'll worry about that later. Uh, let's cut away this. These tiles here. Okay. And then tink. 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 And tink. Yeehaw! It's looking good. Alright, now we should be able to just re put these back in place. I don't think we need them out anymore down here. We will on on the far end there, but again we'll uh, let's let's start with uh, say this one. Bring those back down. Oh, I went too far. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, so that hooks up all of our coal inputs. Let's move on now to our copper and iron inputs. All right, so what we're gonna do uh, for copper and iron is we're gonna go ahead and cut away yeah, let's cut away these pieces for now. Good. I'm going to grab some lifts, and this lift on the left-hand input is going to be facing towards the north. This one will be facing towards the south. Those are our guide lifts for our blueprint. Let's go to our blueprints. This time we want iron copper input left. And it's really important that this is turned the right direction, right? So we want to make sure the white arrow is facing towards the north. And when I put it in place, standing from here, it's bass backwards. So it's important to remember that. Okay, then we line that up on that hole, that on that hole, and we're good. Then we can just put the lifts back in, and we're listening for the tink. 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 Okay. Let's get the rest of these lifts in. We'll put some new guide lifts in for the second piece. That one goes north. This one goes south. 
Go to our blueprints, grab iron copper input right, make sure it's facing to the north, and then get that close to lined up. Uh, back this way one, that looks correct. Yep. Beautiful. Then we just link up. Uh, no, that's not what I meant to do. Grab you. Uh, you link up to there, and then... Hold on. There we go. You link up to here. Okay, so you'll notice that these first uh, two sections here are uh, Mark IV, and that's because we've got these first three machines that are taking in uh, 40 iron ore per minute. Okay. So if we go back down here and if we look on our our sheet over here, we're bringing in a total of 379.957 iron ore. Okay, so that's that's what we're bringing in. So if we go 379 Point nine five seven, and we subtract 40 we're still over 270 subtract 40 again we're still over 270 subtract 40 one more time and now we're below 270 right so that means the first three machines need to be on mark four okay that's the first machine, that's the second machine, that's the third machine. And then after that, we can go back to Mark III. I could just Mark IV everything too, but um, kind of expensive, A and B. I like, I've mentioned this a million times already, but I like Mark III, the look of the Mark III belts. The Mark IV belts and the Mark V are cool, but they're they're very bulky. <laughs> These are cleaner looking. So I, I like to use Mark III whenever I can. Okay, so that gets all of the copper and iron hooked up except for these final two machines um, so let's give ourselves a little bit more platform here so what we want to do here is uh, let's cut that away Uh, okay, so let's get a, a lift here, and that should go down and tink into here. Yes, it does. Okay. Likewise, this one tinks into there. And then the one on the right comes down and should turn here. Let me go around here this way and tink into there and then likewise that one should tink into here beautiful okay so now we're just going to take the iron line make sure we're in straight mode and do that so that'll wrap around and continue the iron flow of the iron ore and then likewise, we'll do the same thing with the copper. Let me give myself a little bit more platform here. Uh, this one, though, we're going to actually... Um, here, let's put that back in place. This one, we're going to need to use a ceiling hanger to there, I believe. So it clears, it clears the iron belt. Yeah, there we go. Good. And that, that gets that hooked up. Okay, if I've done everything right, and that's a big if, um, I think we're done down here with our logistics. We just need to get the actual ore uh, over here. I'm just kind of double checking and looking at everything. Okay, let's just leave our... 
our platform in place for now in case we have to come down here and fix anything. Um, and we're going to actually extend this platform out even further because we're going to have to be doing some stuff over here. So let's get, let's start with our coal input. Now, I am probably, I'm not 100% sure I'm going to do this. But I'm probably going to redo this over here. And the reason for that is because uh, these two lifts in particular are going that direction. And that means we're going to have to run them underneath these other belts and then back up. Functionally, that is not a problem at all. But aesthetically, it kind of sucks. Um, and the only way I can fix that is, is to completely redo, well, not completely, but redo all of that out there so that we have the right product coming in in the right position so I don't have to wrap stuff around. Um, to put it simply, I need to move these two concrete pieces into these two spots. The coal can stay there, and then I need to move the iron and the copper into those two spots. Now, that's not a big deal down here, but it's it, it affects, you know, the routing of everything up there. I'm not going to do that now uh, in this episode, and if I do it at all, it'll probably be an off-camera thing uh, because I need to think about it. I need to think about how exactly I want to do that. Okay, but for today, we're just going to stick with the way it is, and we're going to have to run the iron and copper underneath. Um, okay, so this is on a mark. That should be on a mark four. Because if we look over here, um, we're bringing in a total of, yeah, 442 coal, which is more than 370. So that, this all needs to be marked for at least until we get to the machines. So let's um, let's grab a Mark IV belt and connect it in there. We, we don't want to be in straight mode for this. What we do want to do, though, is we want to run this over to about here, I think. Is that... Yeah, I think that's right. Let's lock that in there. It seems straight. I mean, in, in you know, relative to this belt. I think we're okay. All right, let me run back over here for a minute. This is where we're coming in at here. So I think what I want to do is let's actually come out of there and back to here. Is that lined up with that corner or close enough? I think we could come out one more to there. Right, okay, so we'll put that in place. And then we just need to link up these two as neatly as possible. So let's grab the belt, get out of straight mode, and then just kind of start aiming for here. Okay, let's lock that, or, or freeze that for a minute. We might have to do this on a little bit of a trial and error thing. We'll see. If we just hook that up... Oops. Uh, to there. Is it straight or has it got weird shit going on? No, that looks good. I think that works. You know, because of the, you know, the weird angles and stuff of this build, if this hanger's 
off a little bit, then there's going to be a little bit of a crooked thingy going on in the belt. But that, I think we nailed that first time. That looks, that looks good. Got a couple more there, but actually let's leave those there for the moment and at least extend them out to here because now we got to work on this side. We can get rid of those too. Okay, so now... This lift... That's a Katerian lift. Yeah, that one can... That one can go all the way up. And let's do this. Let's go into vertical mode and go down f four here. And then run this, uh, nope, zoop. Run that down to there. We don't need those there, after all. Okay. Let's remove that. And what we want to do here is... Let's grab, that's the copper, and that's the iron. Okay. Let's run, put a belt on there. And we'll... Oh, it's not going to let me do that. All right, you know what? Um, I, I can just eyeball that. Okay. I'm going to have to come down two. And there we go. Put that there. And then do a Mark IV belt off of the iron. Uh, there we go. And that actually needs to be a Mark III, not a Mark I. Okay, do those bins look okay? Yeah, I, uh, no, they don't. Okay, these need to be moved over to, I think, here. Let's try that again. You go to there. What would that look like if I had that in straight mode? No. That doesn't work either. It seems to me, though, like this needs to be, this is also too far over. One thing to keep in mind, if you guys ever decide to do any kind of a build with angles or anything other than right angles, be prepared for a bunch of fucking around <laughs> to get stuff nice and neat, man. It's just kind of been a pain in the ass. I mean, it'll be worth it in the end. I think, but okay, that looks good. That looks like a straight. I guess that would be a. I don't know. Is that a 45 degree angle? Might be more like a 22. I'm not sure. But yeah, anyway, it's uh. It presents 
uh, challenges that you wouldn't have necessarily if everything was at 90 degree angles. But 90 degree angles are kind of boring sometimes, right? So that's the trade-off. Okay, that looks good. And it looks straight relative to the foundations. We don't have any weird curve thingies going on up there. Okay, let's get back up here. Now, uh, next thing we want to do is we want to run this one over to here. Let's, well, actually, I think I want to bring it back. Okay, why are, uh, what the hell, man? Why are you all of a sudden doing that to me? Well, it was fine a second ago. Oh, shit. Uh, well, okay, here's what we're going to do then. Let's, um... Let's cancel that, and we're going to go into ceiling mount, and we're just going to put that there, and then run you into there. I think that's okay. And we'll put two more ceiling hangers there, and we'll run the copper into this one. And the iron into... Oh, shit. Into this one. Keep falling off the edge here. There. Uh, Alright, I think that's... Okay. And if you're wondering why I'm butting them right up against each other and, and I don't have the one gap in there that I normally would, it's just because of the fact that the way that um, the way that these two come off of here, it, it basically puts them right up against each other. If I held this hanger out a bit, then this wouldn't it wouldn't be quite straight. I mean, we could try it, but it seems to me like I did that in my testing, and I, it didn't look right. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to leave it that way, especially since there's a fairly high probability I'm going to redo all this later anyway. So let's just leave it the way it is for now. Okay. Let's run the iron belt down first. Okay, that'll come... I think that's lined up here. How far back? We'll bring it to that seam. Yeah, that's good. Alright, and then we can put these hangers here. Good so far. Okay, let's give ourselves a little bit more of a platform here so I don't fall through the floor. Though if I fell through here, it wouldn't be that big of a deal because we wouldn't fall, you know, a mile down. <laughs> uh, all right, so iron's got to go into here. So now, again, this is just kind of a matter of lining things up properly so it's nice and straight. Uh, let's keep working from this side first. And we want to bring this out to around here. Uh, let's just bring it to there for a second. Uh, so we're on this seam here. Now, if we 
if we just do a straight connection here. Nope, that's not going to work. Okay, if we do a un, a default, it's not it's not quite lined up. So that means this needs to come this way further. Um, maybe to there. Except for it's got to be here. All right, what does that look like? It's still, yeah, it's still not right. Okay, so let's go, let's try it to there. That looks, that's off by a little bit. Because you see how it's not, following that seam perfectly. So that means that we need to go here, but maybe a half nudge this way. Let's try that. I don't know if no a, any other way to do this without, you know, just trial and error. Okay, so it's even off a, a little bit now to the other side, but is it though? I mean, it's so damn close that I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. I think we're good. Well, let me put it to you this way. I don't think I can make it any better than that anyway. But it's it's going to be... If it's... If it even is off... Well, maybe it's not. Maybe it's... Yeah, it's off a, a smidge. But again, it's imperceptible unless you're really looking for it. So I think we're good. Okay, now, um, let's give ourselves a little bit more space over here. Let's run you out to about here. And then we'll run you to about there. Okay. And then I think what we need to do is run you to mm, probably here I'm guessing yep that looks right uh, yeah I think that's right okay let's uh, redo this We're looking good. Again, that might be off by a gnat's eyebrow, but we're not going to worry about it. Nobody will ever know. As long as you don't tell anybody, I won't tell anybody. How's that? And then the last piece here is the Caterium. Um, so that one we're going to... Let's see. That one's going to come in over here. So I think all we'll do for that is just run this down and face it to the north. I suppose the other thing we could try is facing that lift this direction. One less bend, I guess. Okay, we'll face it this way. Uh, to there. To the there. Okay, let's try that. I still, I mm, still think that's going to push this over too much.
Yeah, it did. Okay, so we're getting close. Let's try that position. Is that still straight, though, with this belt? Yes, it is. See, I told you this part was going to be the, the most work out of this whole thing. Well, I mean, it's been, all of it's been a hell of a lot of work, but, you know, most of that, of course, was off-camera stuff, so. That will probably make it all the way down there. Let's see. I think we got it. See, that's nice and straight that way, and that's straight that way. Yep, we got it. Okay. Again, I'm going to leave all of the under flooring in place for now um, until we can test and verify that everything is working properly. Well, let's put, let's put these pieces in, though. I think we're ready, ladies and gentlemen, to hook up the power and see what happens. As far as the power goes, I think what we'll do is let's run a line straight. You know, I could I could potentially put the, that power up in the logistics floor now that I think about it. The only thing about that is once we get start using that logistics floor, I don't know if it would be in the way. All right, so yeah, that's another thing that, an off-camera thing that I'll have to give some thought to. But right now, we're just going to go with what we got going on here. Okay, moment of truth. Here we go. First thing we want to look for is make sure all of the lights are at least yellow. Yellow or green or white if they're overclocked. Actually, I don't have any overclocking in this little segment here. Okay, so I think we're good on power. All right. So now... Um, it's really just kind of a matter of waiting for a bit for things to get started up and see if everything is running as it should be. So I will bring you guys back here in a little bit after I let this run for a while and I'll let you know what the results are. All right, guys, um, we have a coal problem. Before we look at that, though, uh, everything else seems to be okay. So if we look at um, this constructor, you can see that it's uh, got 100 um, Caterium ingots inside, and it's currently backed up with a full load, 500 of wire. Uh, plus, we can see the wire on the output lift, so we know the Caterium wire is good. Uh, all of the iron alloy machines are good. If we take a look at those, uh, we can see that this has got a full buffer of iron and copper ore, and then uh, likewise all the way down. Plus, again, we can see that you know the, this iron ore is going to be used for iron plates in a later production, and the rest of it has all been fed into our steel foundries, and is all backed up on the belt. So we know we're good on iron. Um, and if we look at our foundries, you can see that each one of them has a, a full stack of iron ingots, but the co there's something wrong with the coal. Um, and I don't, I don't even know. This one doesn't have any coal at all. So I'm, I'm not sure what the problem is. I haven't looked at it yet because I've been AFK uh, for about 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. Uh, so let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. Um... So if you have some coal, 
That is really weird. I wonder if... Did I accidentally cut something? Let's go down. I must have cut something. Because there's no coal running along here at all. Yeah. We like we have no coal whatsoever. Can I get up here? Well, sort of. So what the hell's going on? <laughs> uh yeah, you know what? I'll bet you I cut something over here. Screwed something up over here, and the coal that is currently in those machines is what was on the line before I fucked it up. So uh, I think. Well, see, there's no coal on that line either. Okay, so the problem's further out. Let's let's investigate. These things happen. It's part of the how this game works, or in this case, doesn't work. Oh, that lift is gone. So at some point, I cut that lift. But all the coal that we currently have, we, you know, was what was just on the line before before I cut it. Okay, so we can get right on the edge here. That explains it. Okay, so we need a Mark IV lift. There we go. I mean, if I set up a factory and it worked perfectly right from the get-go with zero issues, I'd be suspicious. <laughs> so that explains it, though. Okay. So, our steel machines should start kicking in here, and I think we'll we'll be in good shape. The coal is now flow in, and incidentally, um, this first line has to be a Mark IV because we have eight machines on this front segment. They are all uh, taking in uh, thirty-six point eight six eight. Multiply that by 8, and it's 290, 294, which is, you know, f about almost 15 over 270. So that's why that first line has to be a Mark IV. And then the rest of it's all Mark III. We only have f four machines in total in this back section. All right, so, yeah, it's going to uh, it's gonna take a while now uh, for the coal to, to get caught up. Um, since everything else is caught up. But I think at this point, this it's all working good. Um, so we're going to let it run for a bit. It, the thing is, though, is it, it's, we can't tell for 100% sure that everything we've done so far is working at peak efficiency because, uh, you know, because we don't have the other uh, machines down the line hooked up yet. So it won't really be until we have the entire factory built and all the machines in place that we'll be able to tell for sure that everything's running at peak efficiency because you know we set up this concrete setup this fine concrete setup the last time and it's it's all backed up so i can't really tell for sure if it's running at 100 percent but we'll get there this is just uh, like i said you know this is taking a long time it's a lot of work i got other things going on uh, too both in real life and on the channel so i'm kind of down to uh, you know I, i'm gonna really try and commit to getting at least one episode out a week for now Maybe more. We'll see how it goes. Um, but that does not at all mean the series is ending. Uh, it's not. I'm planning on keeping this series going for a long time, probably several months, uh, because that's just the nature of this game. You know, some people have saves that are like four years old that they're keep, they keep playing on. So, you know, I'm not, I don't know if we'll go for four years, but <laughs> we're going to go for a while. Uh, so don't worry about that. It's just, uh, like I said, the episodes are... Uh, a little further apart uh, for now and that you know that might and probably will change in the future and I'll try and get them a little more frequently uh, so that being said I think we're gonna wrap up this episode here the next uh, the next part is uh, going to be we'll probably start setting up our more basic steel stuff so our pipes and our beams um, in the next episode most likely now, we still have all of this room over here, too, so um, i got to figure out, you know, all the machines for that. 
but I don't think we'll we'll have enough room for both pipes and machines down here. We might. I don't know. We'll see. But I'll figure that out, and that's what we will plan on working on in the next episode. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.